Hey guys, this is Brendan with Evoke Bike. We are back with part three with Ricardo. And this is a great finish where he talks about positioning in the Peloton, energy expenditure, what his big goal is still, race mindset, emotions in racing, winning two national championships, but also growing through the races that he didn't win and understanding the feeling of your body so that you can really balance the lows and the highs. And of course, I sales pitched Ricardo to become an Evoke coach when he retires because that would be incredible. And he talks about coaching and just managing a couple athletes. So hope you guys enjoy this finale with Ricardo. Man, this was incredible. Thank you so much again for sharing all of your experience and knowledge. Guys, enjoy the episode. Do you have any like really good habits? And then on the other side, any really bad habits? Bad habits is um, I ride a lot of time in the back of the pellet. Oh. That's a little bit... Uh, Why? Why do you do that? Um, sometimes uh, it, it depends. Sometimes I don't want the, the stress all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, If I know, okay, I have to be in front in the final or at that point I go in the front. But before, sometimes it's sometimes to... You lose a lot of energy mental energy for me uh, to really fighting when it's actually not necessary. Mm-hmm. And that problem also um, maybe cost me my my contract uh, in track because in the world tour you cannot do that. It's uh, the world tour positioning uh, is really, really important and every small mistake you pay for it. And uh, if you have 10 positions back, the, maybe you'll come back to the first group, but you cannot go really in the final. So on the continental level, you can do that, but on the, the world to level, it's... Uh, uh, Explain that for people, what you mean by you pay for that, because I have an example in my head on my level of racing, but go in on that a little bit. Like, what do you mean you pay for it if you're in bad position? Because in, in the world to everybody's really good, almost same level or better. So mm-hmm. if you start a climb in 40th position, to move up, it takes quite quite an effort. Mm-hmm. If you can do that, maybe you're there, but then you take so much or so much energy already, or you're already completely game over almost, and then they start already racing. Mm-hmm. So if you start in 10 position, it's much more easier, but uh, it's not so easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm okay with positioning, but I have to say I'm not really talented because I waste a lot of energy to really position. Maybe I can positioning, but I, I spend a lot of energy. And that was also uh, why I struggled a little bit also in the virtual because I, that's, I think that I'm not really gifted. That's, that's, that's how it is. I appreciate your honest uh, viewpoint of yourself. It's, it's really awesome that you have that perspective on my level. It's very funny. So being an amateur cyclist here, um, we have Joe Martin is the only like pro stage race. And well, there's tour Utah, but that's the next level. But, um, so it's like the domestic pro teams are there. It's all really good cat ones and last, well, not in the pandemic, the year before that, um, we went and we got into the pro race. I thought we were going to be doing the cat one, two race last minute. We get in the pro race and I'm like, okay, this is going to be like good lesson learned. We get to the road race. I had never ridden on this course before and it is pouring rain and it is freezing cold and I'm not the best bike handler. So I'm already thinking in my head, like, okay, how am I going to, what am I going to do in this? And it's a little twisty turning in the beginning and just being in the Peloton. I was super nervous. Water's flying everywhere. So I'm like, you know what, when I see this first climb, I'm going to attack and just see what happens. And maybe like, a, maybe they let a little group go, like, cause it's just like a, oh, everywhere. So I attack, a guy comes with me and like, I, I get over this little roller and there's like two more stair steps that I did not realize were going to be there. And I was like, oh man, I just went way too deep. And literally everybody rode past me and I got dropped in like the third mile. It was so embarrassing i was just like oh my god and i ride up to my teammate so people are like flatting left and right i ride up to my teammate and i don't even know why like it was kind of cindery like the road was okay but it was so he flats so he's like hey man wait up for me i'm like okay and he looks he's like well i got a flat you got dropped <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> <laughs> that 
Thanks, man. I needed that. But it uh, is, it's, that's a, it's, you know, getting that comfort in the group is I find very difficult when you're racing people that are better than you. And then you have your own self doubt of, well, I don't belong here to take this position. You know, like these are the pros in the U S they should be up front. I should be behind them. And you like, you're almost like mentally battling yourself to be like, no, man, I got a job to do too. Like I need to get up there. And if they talk like too bad, I'm here to race. And I can only imagine what that's like in your shoes on the world tour level, like, yeah, I just can't even imagine that. That's wild. No, but uh, as, as a team, you can really fuck the people behind. If you, if you, if the Baku is right, then sometimes, uh, for example, I remember a good story because in the Giro, uh, we had to pull for our sprinter. So I was in the front pulling with a uh, second guy, with Jack Bobridge. I don't know if you know him. Yeah. He was uh, the Australian. And he said, okay, we pull now, but we make some fun. So in every village we came, we break full before the corner and sprint out full. And then just for 10 seconds, then we continue. And then suddenly we hear the radio because right ahead of that, he was uh, quite pissed. Hey, stop, stop. Uh, you're going crazy. Why are you going so fast? But we don't go fast. We just enter always in every corner full with the break, sprint 10 seconds, and then continue normal speed. And in the back, they were already on the limit. So actually, it doesn't, when you're right in the front, you don't, sometimes you go really easy and, and the, the guys in the back, they, oh, they go, they go really hard, really hard. But in the, the back end, sucks. It depends, it depends on the parkour, but it was a little bit left and right. And, but suddenly he was screaming in the radio, stop, stop, easy, easy, because he was already dropped in the, in the, in the caravan and uh, we were just making a joke. And, at every corner, we, we did that. Fun. And the person was already in one line, but we just go 40, 45k in the front, not, not, not faster. Yeah. <laughs> just out of the corners, we, we sprint for 10 seconds and then we go normal again. So, oh, it's, yeah, if you're in the front, it's okay. Yeah. It's what do you, what do you think now? So, you're, you're back. Is your team from Austria that you're on right now? Yes. And so what's, what's kind of driving you? Do you, is it, where do you want to go with this thing? Uh, if you don't mind sharing, if you don't want to, you don't have to, um, do you want to get back to pro tour now that you have kids? Does that change things? Like what's Ricardo thinking right now of moving forward through, you know, let's say pandemic ends in this year, hopefully, and things get back to normal. Like what's your goal? Uh, no, I, I'm still, still very motivated to, to continue. I like the riding the bike, even for example, last year in the COVID time, I don't stop training. I just go out every day training because I like it. Mm -hmm. And also in the Austrian team, we had really good structure. We we are employed by the team, so we are professional. Of course, if there's a possibility to, to step up again, I will do because uh, it's always nice. Uh, when I had two years ago the chance with uh, CCC to, to come back. But... I enjoy racing actually, and that I want to, to continue as, as long as possible. And if you, if you don't have fun anymore, okay, then you have to stop. But for me, it's for the moment, it's a good solution. Also, you have a lot of time uh, with the kids. I really like because, uh, uh, okay, you're a lot of way off, away, but also a lot of time at home, uh, especially yeah. in the winter time. I can do everyday breakfast with my daughter. So it's it's really nice also to to combine that, and no, I want I want to keep keep riding as long as possible. That's awesome, man. What's I think my last question for you, and uh, not I could talk. I like that you're really into the training side. I could talk to you for hours about that. Um, what do you think? You know, mindset. Like what? When I say mindset, and maybe it's towards training, maybe it's towards racing. How has your mindset grown? I'm sure you're a much different rider from the first time you did your first pro race to now. How do you, like, do you consider using your mind to make you a better athlete at all? Uh, yes, I'm a really emotional guy. Okay. I can, uh, it depends really on the emotions, how I perform. It's really, uh, also in track when, because I had, um, uh, crashes when I broke the collarbone and then I was scared in the downhills and 
everything. So that also was always in my mind. Mm-hmm. And but at the same time, before when I won Tour of Austria, I came to Tour of Austria. I say nobody can drop me. I was like naive because I was I had good success. I was really confident in the races before, but Tour of Austria is a completely different level then. But I was so confident nobody can drop me. Okay, maybe I cannot drop somebody, but on the climb nobody can drop me. And that sometimes some races I I can go really really deep if I um, get my emotions right. I I go really really deep. But on the other hand, if I bad emotion, I'm scared, and I don't perform uh, really well. And I, I could see that the last 10 years, uh, the best races I, I did was always when I was emotionally really, really on a high. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I can also see it in the morning. If I emotionally quite good, then I know, okay, I can, I can do something special today. But on the other hand, it can be the opposite also. <laughs> How do you think, can you control that at all? Or how can you influence that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's... It, it depends on the mood. Uh, or maybe some races you like or some races you don't like for, uh, for some reason. Mm-hmm. That also, for example, it's the next week uh, in Croatia, I don't like this race. It's, it's 200 people some amateurs also there a lot of crashes um, mm. so uh, it's, it's a nice preparation race but i know i never was good there i was top 10 but i was never uh, top step so mm-hmm. the race is already in my mind it's not something for me i already t- told the director ah, we see maybe i took one stage so that already <laughs> but one week later we had this, we have in austria the opening race and it's for our sponsor, big like world championship. If you win that, you have a contract for your whole life. And what so, race is this? It's the opening race in Austria, the the the, uh, the first race in Austria. So it's like a big opening. What's the name of it? It's it's it's, it's actually not a, a categorized. It's just a oh, okay a national race. But I won it already four times, so it was. And it's a it's a parkour that didn't suit me, but I'm really motivated. I don't know, 30 k from my home, a lot of friends there, and then you have the emotion, and I'm always performing well. I don't know why, but even if the parkour is absolutely not my 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 thing, but yeah, that's that's how it is. Being a national champion, that this that might be the answer to this one. But what results are you most proud of? Oh, I have a lot. Because um, yeah, the, the the two national titles. Oh, you won it. Uh, I'm sorry, man. I didn't realize you won it twice. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah and, and were they and were the they way, both elite or anything when you were under 23? No, no, elite. But the the way I won it was 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 crazy because the the, the first time I after 10k I went in the break with uh, one other guy, Matthias Brendle. He's now in Detroit Cycling Academy. So we, I was hoping that somebody was coming, and then after 100k, he, he told me hey, he, he's finished. And I said, okay, then I need to go the next, the last 70k alone. And every behind was pulling, 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 but he never, they never catch, me. never. That's awesome. Well, and and the next year the same because all the I was in track the first year and. All the, the pro riders like Bernie Idol, they want to flick me. And uh, they flicked me in the beginning. So there was a 10, a 10, uh, 10 people breakaway. Mm-hmm. And it was close to Innsbruck. And I, I was living there two years. So I know the parkour very well, the last part. And then already four minutes. And at one point, I don't know, 60K from the finish, I went alone from the, from the peloton, catch everybody. And then I, I won solo. So it was also nice. Nice, uh, nice thing. So other two nationals were quite, quite good. Dude, that's incredible. It's uh, any times that you didn't win that you were like, you just still felt really good about the race. Um, the race that I didn't want when I was feeling good. You mean? 
Uh, just, you know, like, so for me, I have like, um, there's a race I came in fifth. And it was uh, what they call gravel worlds here in the U S it's like a big gravel race, but there's a lot of X uh, road pros. And like the first year I came in like 25th. And then when I got fifth, I got dropped at mile a hundred and it's 150 mile race. So it was like 130 by a pro mountain biker and another guy who's just an absolute ripper. Um, and I was still proud of that. Like I still felt good even though you're like, you go to win and I didn't even get on the podium, but it was like, I felt like I grew a little bit that day as a cyclist because it, it like reassured me of training that I did. You know, I was no longer dropped at mile a hundred or mile 80. Like I was there at the end. Um, it just didn't, you know, I didn't have enough. And so it, it kind of motivated me. It's like, it's, keeps me super hungry to try and go back there to see like how okay how can I finish this off how can I get to the next level like do you have any of those experiences where it was just like you didn't win but you were like okay today was a good day because it ca it's catapulting you forward in some way maybe that would have been a better way to uh, yeah actually in the year when I won the second national mm -hmm. uh, uh, camp, one week later two of Austria stuff and I was the defending champion there was a lot of media everything and on the first day, there was a, a 3K uphill finish. And I had a really, really bad day. I lose two and a half minutes. I, I was completely dehydrated. I was so losing two and a half minutes. I was like, oh my God, the finish. And then my, my coach was texting me, hey, you, I feel so sorry for, you feel so sorry for me and try to make the best out of the week. And then I was really proud because I, I found my legs back and step by step in the end, I was fifth in GC. I, 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 I gained so much time back and I was uh, then fifth in the time trial, was good on the, uh, the uphill finish then, but it was really nice to see that, okay, it was really a bad day and it was maybe a mistake of, 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 of me to not drink uh, too much. But then the next day, I go, I come back, I come back, I come back, and then I was uh, still fifth in the GC, and then I was, I was really proud in the end. Even if I was not winning, uh, I was really proud of myself. That really, even the week starts so bad because two and a half, three minutes is a lot if you want to 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 fight for the uh, for the win again. And but then to come back like this was was super nice, and I was that I'm I'm really proud also. Well, that's really cool. That's a really good kind of like ending point of taking that specific instance, but also, you know, applying it to amateur training. You know, we see so many people that think that this like curve of success is going to be just this linear up, 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 up. And people hit road bumps and some people get very derailed. And like on the micro side of just this one race, when it's like, oh man, I had a horrible day. Instead of just packing it in and being pissed off, you're like, all right, I'm going to go back. And like, even though you come in fifth, not what you went there for, it still like has a positive outcome that pushes you forward in the right direction. Rather than you going home and being like, that was awful. What a horrible race. Da, da, da. You know, I think that's, that is your mindset. Like you, I mean, you're clearly a massive winner in cycling, but it seems like you just have this a very like winner's mindset, and you made the most of that. Uh, I think it's really yeah. You important. have to you have to keep you have to keep going. It's, yeah. uh, there are always good days and, and and bad days, and also in the training, and also you have, for example, when you when we come back to amateurs, I think a lot of a lot of people they don't have really a good feeling with their body. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I see it. Uh, with my friends, when they do some training, so I say, do you think it's okay? For me, it would be too much. Mm -hmm. But you, and they, they, sometimes they don't have the feeling. On the bike, it's crazy. They, they go so hard in, on, the, on the climbs, and, and uh, then I, you ask them, do you think that's okay? Because, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good level, but for me, that's also too fast. So you don't think it's too much? Ah, uh, maybe, yeah, uh, because uh, when you say that, okay, maybe, but sometimes they don't have the feeling, and you have you have to really find uh, a feeling for your body, and then you can do a hard training, you can do easy training, you can push it one day, but if you have a, 
a good feeling that you can you can balance really good uh, the load and then it's no problem. You can do every training you want. You can do a crazy session, easy session, but uh, you have to find a good feeling. That's, that's, I think that's really important. Ricardo, this was awesome, man. Really enjoyed this. Like uh, just your insights from the coaching side. Do you coach people, by the way? Uh, I tried with uh, two amateurs. Okay. It, it's not so easy. I mean, logistically, I mean, I'm sometimes I'm a little bit lazy or because I'm doing more like uh, calling, texting them, but I don't do it on right. training piece. I just okay. want to, to try it a little bit how, how it is. Bike Dude, is, I'm, I'm going to sales pitch you when you retire from bike racing. We need some people. Yeah. We're going to have yeah. Alex over there. We need some more Europeans and uh, your wealth no, of knowledge. No, no problem. No, I just want to find out how is everything. Because it's actually quite quite busy sometimes. If, if you have a lot of athletes, yeah, it's, it's not so easy to to have the balance or to uh, to know everybody what he's what he's doing. So mm -hmm. that I I wanted to try with two people, but that was already not so easy. Dude, <laughs> really? it, it, it's you got to have like the process, and because that was that was one of my things of when I, I was selling medical devices for probably 13 years and just coaching people on the side, and I would max it at like six or seven. And there were times when I was busy with work, I was like. Ah, this is like just way too much. And I really, that's when I started to have to put in like processes of like, okay, how am I going to do this? If I'm going to go into like a coaching business, you know, you have to be efficient and you have to be able to find ways to like stay in tune with that person. You, you can't just open up someone's training peaks calendar and be like, okay, what has this person been doing? Like you just, there's no f like rhythm to the training then. So I know what you mean. It's uh, yeah, it's, it gets out oh, of hand. And sometimes. also, when 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 the guy asked me, can you make a plan for two weeks? I say uh, it's difficult because I, I for me I, I also like always in one block. So especially in Austria in the winter it's also difficult with the weather. So you look at the weather: is the weather good? Is the weather bad? Okay, you can mm -hmm. do here the long. Or or it's raining today. Or maybe you go just on indoor. You do two hours. So I, for me it's almost. I also plan my training day by day. Okay, I've maybe. Okay, in the next two weeks, I want to do maybe this kind of stuff, maybe view to max or something. But honestly, every day in the morning, I say, okay, I do this. Okay, I do that. Yeah. It's not like I don't plan too much ahead because, yeah, also in Austria with the with the winter with the snow, you have to be very really flexible. And uh, then I had also a lot of trouble with because I had a Spanish coach in uh, in track, and he was always complaining because hey, why you went so long? I say. Tomorrow the snow is coming. I, I need right. to write uh, today the long one. So, so that's why I, I do it really short term. Uh, I try to plan. Yeah, I've tried doing it longer and it doesn't work because then an athlete like skips three days and it's like, oh, that, that okay, never reshuffle everything. So yeah. Hey man, I won't keep you any longer. I really appreciate you doing this. Is awesome. And uh, are you on Instagram? Of course. Yeah. Okay. I'll tag you on this. Is it, what's your handle? Uh, Ricardo underscore. Doodle. Cool. I think it's, uh, I'll look you up, man. Thank you so much. This was awesome. You have a wealth nice of knowledge. To, nice to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, man. And uh, thanks for being patient as I got off the farm and <laughs> am in a parking lot. <laughs> well, then I, uh, so I have a break from the twins. It's also nice to be there. <laughs> I don't need to, to work here. <laughs> Hey, man, I'll talk to you soon. And when I'm in Europe, hopefully I can buy you a coffee and go for a ride. Yes, it would be nice, yeah. Awesome, man. Thank have you. A great, have a nice have a great day. Bye-bye. See, see ya. See ya. Ciao.